out a new sponsor to Health Blaze. All the information is in the description. Use the promo code above. Good filler one boxing at 18% off of all their natural products from deodorant, pomade, toothpaste, and much, much more. And they have additional discounts on their website as well. That's the healthblaze.com. Start December 20th. That promo code is good for 18% off. We go. All right, man. We about to get a real deal, man. Talk about Canelo, Jamar, Charlo. How it would go. I seen on Boxing Eco that uh, Freddie Rope said Jamar Charlo the best at 160. He beat Canelo Alvarez. But let's talk about it from my perspective. And just looking at their fights, I broke down from stylistically a couple of their fights before. Um, I haven't, in particular, broke down the fights, you know, looking at them fighting each other as potential opponents. But uh, pretty much, uh, I think... If Charlo was going to be successful, and like I said, it, I ain't no fanboy shit when I'm breaking down no fights. If Charlo going to be successful, it's really going to make it, uh, it's really either going to be pushing Canelo back with an aggressive jab and doubling it up and being, you know, being real aggressive with his jab, kind of like Tommy Hearns and, you know, putting the right hand behind it. That's how, that's how I'd be looking, looking at it. Um, and then when he get Canelo, you know, uh, with his back's against the rope in the corner, you know, keeping that perfect distance and letting shots roll. I think uh, a black rhythmic fighter, may it be for me the Africa, America, a rhythmic fighter can speak that language a lot of the times. Guys that understand that they they been in the gym, they they got they fight with the with rhythm, they slick, they got speed. You know, guys that really been in the gym with. Uh, with athletic fighters, I think it's not a shock for black fighters when they see Canelo slipping and dipping that that really speak that language. You know, Danny Jacobs. You know, it was a it was a it was questionable for him because Danny Jacobs just don't have that skill set. You know, something about his temperament I don't like. But with Charlo, I think he can get aggressive with that jab. He can back Canelo up, and then he can run some combinations and maybe land something. But for him, it's going to be about that jab, and it's going to be a bit, be about cleaning up the mistakes that he make. Because those mistakes that he make, is going, Canelo is going, going to hit him consistently. He drops his hand. He try to, you know, he just makes a lot of fundamental mistakes. He really, he really, I, he's athletic, but he's stiff in his approach, and that's okay. That's okay. You don't have to be real fluid and real slick. It's okay, you know. Because if he able to use that jab like Klitschko, like somebody said, push it out there, turn to a check hook, control range, kind of like Tommy Klitschko did, control range, walk guys into the right hand, I think, you know, he could be successful. But right now, man, Canelo Alvarez will, will have fun with him. If he was to beat Canelo Alvarez, it's going to be with his tenacity, it's going to be with his intangibles, his heart, his great stamina, his his... His, his punching power. It's going to be with a lot of intangibles, some intangibles you need to win. And it's going to be in there, I got to go get Canelo. I got to look for the knockout. That's what it's going to be. It's not going to be a skill thing where he going to just be scoring on Canelo and out box Canelo on some Mayweather shit. It ain't going to be that. It's going to be him coming in with one mindset, one mindset only. That's to beat Canelo ass and, 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 and keep stalking him the whole fight. And to do that, he got to be aggressive. I think he got the footwork to cut the ring and close the distance on him. Uh, and, and I think he got the punching power to do so. And I think he got the, the combination punches to do so. But I just see Canelo Alvarez, you know, with all the advantages that he has as far as the, the promotional backing, the referees, the judges. They're going to make sure he got every advantage in the book. He probably put a rehydration clause on him. You know, just all every advantage in the book. He's just too good to beat. You know, with every advantage. Now, if this is, you know, if this is on even playing field, even playing ground, then, okay, I still probably favor him over over Jamal Charlo, to be real. This guy is, is, a, is a good fighter. He got good body punching, and he really elusive up top, but good counter puncher. And Jamal Charlo drops his hands. He make a lot of fundamental mistakes. I can see Canelo... You know, with the uppercut, I can see Canelo with the sweeping check hook. I can see with Canelo the pull counter. I can see Canelo doubling, tripling up to the body. But at the end of the day, if Canelo get tired and Jamal Charlo still got gas to go in the fight, I believe it, it could come down to the championship round, the 10th, 11th, 12th round. And if Jamal Charlo is really able to use his tenacity and his aggressive nature to, to wear this dude down, it can be a late stoppage. 
It can be a late stoppage. I wouldn't be surprised if the referee, you know, gave Canelo extra time, you know, with trying to warn Charlo about penalties. But as far as the boxing match and everything that Canelo got in his favor, I would expect Canelo um, to, to, to score on him. I expect Canelo to counter him all night. I expect Canelo to look good the first six rounds. But around the seventh, eighth, ninth round, you know, right when Keith Thurman be getting tired, Canelo get tired too. And I think Canelo leaves time for you to work. And if, you know, Charlo got value, he, he aggressive. And he feel that Canelo can't hurt him, which I think Canelo power has always been overrated. I think he got an opportunity to to, to win the 6th, 7th, 8th, ninth round, going to the 10th round, 11th round, 12th round, with, with not only a chance to win it, but a chance to knock him out. But right now, he's just not ready for that, unless he got another gear that he ain't shown yet. But he's just not ready for a guy like Canelo with the advantages that he got, you know, able to hit you to the body and to the head early on. If he's able to take Canelo power, he'll keep coming. I'm telling you, he'll keep coming. He got the, the right jab. He got the right mentality to do so. You know, Canelo ain't Brandon Adams. You know what I'm saying? You know, as far as, you know, he just, you know, you know, he, as far as he, he slick. But Brandon Adams was, was, was tough. And at some time, he wasn't looking to throw. And if you don't look to throw versus Charlo, it's going to be a problem. Canelo going to look to throw. Canelo can see the counters coming. He can take advantage of them. So it, it's gonna be it's gonna have more opportunity for Charlo to punch with Canelo. But quite frankly, I don't see why Canelo don't want to fight Charlo. Is it the height? Is it the stamina? Was it the the great chin he showed versus Korobov? Is it I don't want to give niggas a, a chance to win? I I really don't know. With Triple G, I really don't know. I feel the Triple G got a good chance at winning him. And Andrade, I can understand. Andrade is your classic fleet of foot fighter that gives Canelo a problem. Charlo ain't that. Charlo ain't that. I think they they nervous about Jamal Charlo's uh, chin and stamina. I don't get it. Kovalev don't bring more money to the table than Charlo. He don't. Calvin Smith ain't no pool. Charlo a bigger pool and a bigger name in America than both of them. So I really don't understand why he don't take that challenge on. Demetrius Andrade, I understand. Very slick, very elusive, great feet. You can start to see him come back to form a little bit. You can start to see his legs looking better, his rhythm in there good. He boxed beautiful, his hand speed, the aggression there. He found his rhythm. But Jamal and Charlo, I, I don't get why they don't want to fight him. Yeah, he's he very hittable. He's very beatable. Very beatable. And I understand why Jamal Charlo wants to fight. He want to prove me wrong and other people wrong. But as of now, his only chance is going to be from when Canelo get tired in the 7th, 6th, 7th, 8th round and down the stretch to either catch up on points, which he'd be, by, he'd, he'd be, be down by 1,000 by the end, knowing they judges, or to knock Canelo out. And maybe Canelo feel that he got enough power to knock him out. I just don't understand why Oscar De La Hoya and them don't want to fight. Maybe they don't want to give Al Heyman a chance, his fighters a chance. Maybe they blocking Al Heyman out. Because they're not, they not calling out David Benavidez. They're not calling out Caleb Plant neither. They're not calling out a guy like Marcus Brown at 170, 175, even if he get a belt. They're not calling those type of guys out. They're calling out Kovalev. Who was on ESPN though? And Oscar De La Hoya and Bob Arum, you know, they had a good relationship at one point. They calling out, you know, um, Callum Smith, who was his own. You know, they not looking, and they not looking to fight brothers, and that's the problem. Canelo don't want to fight the brothers. He know that they got the real speed and the real rhythm and moving. He the generic version. He the generic been a drill. You know what I'm saying? He look, he looked like us versus you know uh, white fighters and. And, and lower level fighters, but when you put them off the generic thing with the real thing, the generic is well, the real thing is way better most of the time. It's a difference. Canelo is a generic brother. He is. He is a generic brother. He generic. You know, Charlo's the real thing. But hey, it is what it is, man. Uh, but I favor Canelo, even if it's an even playing field. And the playing field Canelo got, it ain't even. Canelo, man, I favor Canelo, uh, you know, comfortably. Just my personal opinion on it. Well, you know, I don't know the fanboys gonna come here and get mad, but hey, it's just my opinion. Honest assessment. Don't forget, we on uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Reach out to the email as well. 
and intro instrumental link in the description. Don't forget to check out our sponsor, the Hellblaze, at theHellblaze.com. Promo code GoodFellow one box and get you 18% off the 100% all natural products, soaps, lotions, foot socks, bath bombs, deodorant, toothpaste, hair part made, much, much more. Website, promo code description. Appreciate the love, support, share the videos. I got one more video like this coming. One time for the one time we go.